The function f is defined by f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are constants. The graph of y equals f of x in the xy plane passes through the points 7, 0, and negative 3, 0. If a is an integer greater than 1, which of the following could be the value of a plus b? Okay, so we're given this equation, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That's the standard form of a quadratic equation. And we need to find the value of a plus b, knowing that this graph, this function, passes through the point 7, 0, and negative 3, 0. Just by looking at these two points, we can recognize that these are roots of the quadratic because they both have y values of 0. So the graph passes through the x-axis through these two points, which means that we can rewrite the standard form using the roots form. So we can rewrite f of x as a times x minus 7 times x plus 3. So here, when x is equal to 7, 7 minus 7 is 0. So this gives us an f of x equals 0 at an x value of 7. So that's like the first point, the first root. And then the second parenthesis is the second root. Because when x equals negative 3, like in this point here, we negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So this, the right-hand side becomes 0. So at an x value of negative 3, f of x equals 0. So these, this is the quadratic written using the roots. And then we have the a term, which is exactly the a term from the standard form. This just determines the, the, how dilated the quadratic is and the sign of the quadratic. And this a term is the same as the a term from the standard form of the quadratic. Okay, so let's expand this out. So if we do that, we'll have a times x squared minus 7x plus 3x minus 21. So I just distributed out the, the first two terms here into both of the terms in the second parentheses. So let's simplify this. So we have f of x equals ax squared. Here, these two terms, you can just combine them to negative 10x. So a times negative 10x is negative 10ax. Oh, whoops, this should actually be a positive 3x, since x times 3 is positive. So... If this is positive, then this should be a negative 4x. So negative 4x times a is negative 4ax. And then negative 21 times a is just negative 21a. Okay, so now we have this form of the same equation. And we can see that, so in this case, a just equals a. That's obvious well, for the x squared term. And that b, the coefficient of the first degree term, is now negative 4a. So we have that a equals a, obviously, and then we have that b equals negative 4a. So let's rewrite this term that we're trying to find. So we're trying to find the value of a plus b. But this equals a plus a minus 4a. So that means a plus b actually equals negative 3a. Okay, so now we can use this information to see which of these answer choices can be the answer. So the first clue we have is that a is an integer, which means it's a whole number, and that it is greater than 1. So if a is greater than 1 and it's an integer, well, the next integer is 2. So that means a must be greater than or equal to 2. It can't be anything less than 2 because then it would be a decimal, but it has to be greater than 1. So the next integer from 1 is 2. So a has to be greater than or equal to 2, which means that negative 3a 
which we've so if we multiply the left hand side by negative 3a and we'll also multiply the right hand side by negative 3 so we'll have negative 3 times 2 and when you multiply an inequality by a negative you have to flip the inequality sign so now we see that negative 3a has to be less than or equal to negative 3 times 2 so we can simplify that to just negative 3a has to be less than or equal to negative 6. So that means negative 3a, which is equal to a plus b from this equation that we derived. So this basically says that a plus b has to be less than or equal to negative 6. And the only answer choice in this list that is less than or equal to negative 6 is negative 6. Negative 3 is larger than negative 6, 4 is larger than negative 6, and 5 is larger than negative 6. So A is the correct answer.